the question of uh, is it possible to be an insider critic uh, i think uh, that is a problem that uh, troubles us deeply because you know we get into the binary of the insider and the outsider so uh, having said that i feel to think of ourselves as insiders while belonging to uh, the former colonial uh, world in the sense that we are now if we imagine ourselves as post colonial subjects and then uh, with that we also occupy those spaces which are now post colonial and then we start using these terms of insider and outsider is a bit of a problematic for me because uh, uh, when we do that i think we get into this binary of the colonial and the colonized directly and then we want to think of ourselves as the present post colonial subject so i think it opens up a debate in that direction and uh, what i feel is 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 post colonial theory then as today when we speak of post colonial subject is post colonial theory then a conscious act of west bashing are we trying to still do a little bit of west bashing and blame the colonizer for all the problems and suffering of the present uh, i would like to uh, recall here some of the very important crucial statements uh, by professor spivak of two directions in which subjects of thinking the present subjects uh, post colonial subjects we can call us as that two directions in which we can take us one is uh, it could lead us to a kind of a nostalgia for a pristine past which is no longer than we are so this is one thing that can happen we talk approach and the second it could lead us to could be to a false sense of glorifying an imagined past and uh, it might help us get into create a new binary out of what earlier binary and have a new binary where we see the colonial as foreign and the post colonial as native and therefore try to uh, look at our own subjectivities in terms of our new find cultural i think uh, this is my take on this first yeah i think uh, uh, it can yeah right i i like to take this forward uh, more than anything else uh, i quite agree with the fact that there is this problem of binaries uh, on the one hand on the one hand but on the other there is there is need to acknowledge the actual so to speak or the experience so to speak which is the fact that we are the colonized it is not as if we have not been colonized by a western power or for that matter by, by britain or a wide variety of other people in this sense at at what one end i think there is a need for us to speak from the position of the colonized in some in some in some ways on the on the other side of the fence there are other imperialisms that have constantly been part of what we now know as 19th century british colonialism uh, for for the indian context let us let us say that that, that is that is pre colonial typically in the british sense of the term right that comes from a earlier period in history uh, those colonial those imperialisms have come let us say from social strata hierarchies Uh, like caste for instance uh, uh, a wide variety of invasions that have taken place not only islamic but a wide variety of invasions that have taken place in time and therefore in a way uh, caused a great deal of whatever has to be has, has been caused in other words i'm not very sure about occupying the place of the post colonial subject as i want to occupy the space of a colonized you know you know a, a, a subaltern to be to use a, a you know to use a, a specific kind of term uh, to understand that 
In other words, there is a certain kind of marginality that an insider critic can speak from. This is a very central feature to my understanding of post-coloniality. This marginality is not directly alone a post-colonial subjecthood as in the British colonial project. But in a wide variety of ways, it is a position that has come to mean the impositions of power from a wide variety of imperial sources. And therefore, I think there is a possibility of being an insider critic. What is the what for me, therefore, is the value of this insider critic, right? to say the least? The insider critic, while being part of a particular condition, is also in many ways marginal to that particular condition. That's the point I'm trying to make all the time. Right? In other words, there is a certain kind of organicity from which this insider critic is going to be functioning, in to say the least. And therefore, you probably have people who are talking about British colonialism at all, but who are in any way dealing with questions of imperialism. I think, uh, for instance, a Samskara by, uh, by Anantamurti is about a different kind of imperialism, a different kind of understanding, and how you are caught in this really important uh, flashpoint between tradition and modernity in some sense. Right? And therefore, you know, the, the, the imperialism of caste, for instance. For instance, the questions that Girish Karnad would probably raise within uh, within Tukluk is a question are questions that are not raised only about, let us say, a particular period in imperialism, but a particular set of imperialism even in the current, so to speak. Now they speak to that, right? In some sense. So if you were to consider um, the the question of imperialisms, which are far larger than just the project of colonialism. Uh, there is the place, I think, for the insider critic. I often, uh, you know, um, remember in this context, uh, uh, the, the African writer, Achinua Achabe, says, I've been given this English language and intend to use it. So even though we are colonized by a non-native subject, would so to speak, right, uh, there is the fact that you are going to, in some ways, uh, uh, interrogate and uh, what a subaltern, marginal voice is about. That, I think, is how the insider critic needs to be looked at. The insider critic is both familiar and distanced from the experience of the imperialisms of all time.